and uh, refraction of light uh, when light refracts when light goes from one kind of medium to another kind of medium it, it undergoes some changes number one speed definitely changes if two media have different optical density they have different kind of impedance to the light so light will have different speed for them secondly the light deviates from the original path third wavelength changes thing that does not change is the frequency frequency stays the same and and how much light deviates the ratio between the original and the deviated part some kind of ratio is called refractive index it is kind of constant a constant that relates sign of angle in in any medium with sign of angle in vacuum so snell's law which is not part of our syllabus like we don't need to know the law but it it says that sign of angle in any medium is directly proportional to sign of angle in vacuum and all of the angles are measured from the normal now the ratio between sign of angle in air and sign of angle in medium okay sign of angle in air and sign of angle in medium is known as refractive index and remember it is always going to be for your syllabus it is it is always going to be an improper fraction and if something is improper fraction it means it has a bigger numerator than denominator as light is fastest in air so it will have the greatest angle in air so whether you find refractive index using angle you find refractive index using speed whether you find refractive index using wavelength or the depth of anything you will always have the bigger value in the numerator and smaller value in the denominator and you will have the the speed angle wavelength and depth in air at top and in any other medium at bottom so these are the formulas not only you need to know the formulas you should also be able to put one formula equal to another one so there can be a question where i can give you the two angles and ask you to find refractive index and then in the next part i can ask you to use that refractive index to find speed of light in that medium because one thing that you have to remember which is supposed to be part of your memory a uh, knowledge based information is speed of light in vacuum or air you need to know speed of light in vacuum or air is always going to be 3.0 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second second speed of light in vacuum or air because in your syllabus examiner considers speed of light is same in air and in vacuum this is some information that you need to remember you need to know it because examiner can simply give you a question what is speed of light in air one mark so there's no data there's no calculation there's no uh any any way that you can figure it out if you don't already know it so this is something you need to remember now sign of angle in air divided by sign of angle in medium or sign of uh, uh, speed of light in air divided by speed of light in medium wavelength of light in air divided by wavelength of light in medium all these things can give you the refractive index now what is depth actually when we see in a swimming pool for example this person is standing on the side of a swimming pool he he feels that the the water is very shallow uh, and and uh, people who who have seen 
a swimming pool like this, they, they will agree with me. When they look at the water in the, in the swimming pool, swimming pool apparently feels very shallow. But when they dive into it, it is not as shallow as it looks from the outside. The thing is that the light is bending when it is coming out. When light goes from water to air, it bends away from the normal. And the person conceives an image opposite to the direction it receives light. So this person is receiving light. So for example, this is a swimming pool and there is a, there is a light at the bottom of a swimming pool. I hope you have seen these kind, of, these kind of lights in swimming pool where they put those lights on the floor to make it more, more uh, visible. So the light, when it comes out, it bends away from the normal and person sees the object. I, I hope you can see that. The, I means image, O means object. O is where actually object is. And I is where it apparently looks to the person, like person conceives an image at position I. So apparent depth is less than actual depth. The ratio between real depth and apparent depth is also known as refractive index. So these are the different formulas. I think you should note them down, all of them. They all give you refractive index and you can put one equal to another one to find any missing value. Now, critical angle. Okay, this diagram is drawn from glass to air. I hope you can see the arrowhead. All these things, they, they are coming. So focus on the arrowhead. Uh, look at the red one. Red one goes from glass to air because in glass speed is less, in air speed is more. So look at the red one. Red one is the first one. It goes into uh, air and bends away from the normal. Then black one, I increase the angle of incidence. What happens? Black one also bends away from the normal. But look at the blue one. What happens to the blue one? Blue one is extended to a certain angle that its corresponding angle of refraction has become 90 degree. Light bends away from the normal. So if angle is increasing, it should go to 90 degree in a, in a faster medium. So angle goes to 90 degree in air before it goes to 90 degree in glass. Here is the thing. The angle that is made in glass, which makes that 90 degree angle in air is known as critical angle. Critical angle itself is not a 90 degree angle, but this is an angle which produces a 90 degree angle in the rarer medium. So the blue one in this case is at critical angle. So what is the definition of critical angle? Angle of incidence in a denser medium for which the corresponding angle of refraction is 90 degree is called critical angle. Okay. So the blue one, the angle that blue one makes with the Normal. I'm. I mean, this. This is normal. So this angle is critical angle. So what is critical angle? Angle of incidence in a denser medium, which has a ninety degree angle in rarer medium, is known as critical 
angle. Now, critical angle as it has a 90 degree angle of refraction, we can make a formula for that because we already know angle of refraction is 90 degree. Angle of incidence is critical angle. Okay, angle of incidence is critical angle, angle of refraction is 90 degree, and it has to be equal to refractive index. So sine 90 over sine C equals to, and sine C equals to one over N. So C has a formula. It is sine inverse of one over N. It is a very important formula. Sometimes it is used to find critical angle. Sometimes it, it can also be used to find refractive index. Because refractive index would be one over sine C. So both formulas can be used for one another. So critical angle is a special angle of incidence in a denser medium, which makes a 90 degree angle in faster medium. Now, if you if you're a physics student, you, you never stop. Okay. So I was increasing angle, and there came an a, there came a point where angle of incidence was so big that the angle of refraction became 90 degrees. So there's no more room for angle of refraction to be bigger than that. Angle of refraction is already to the maximum value. So what will happen if I make angle of incidence bigger than this critical angle? What will happen if I, if I make the incident ray go further away from the normal, so angle of incidence increases beyond this critical angle. There's no more room for light to refract outside because I hope you can see it has gone to the, this is the maximum possible angle. Angle of incidence or angle of refraction. What is the maximum possible angle for angle of uh, refraction? Answer is 90 degree. What is maximum possible angle for angle of incidence? Answer is 90 degree because they can maximum increase to 90 degrees. So if angle of refraction has already gone to 90 degree and I make um, angle of incidence a bit, bit more, what you can guess what can happen? There's no more space reflection. for life. Yes? Uh, reflection, sir? Yes. Instead of light going out into the other medium, it will bend inside. Rather than it going out, it will stay in the same medium and it will, it will reflect back. This is a very special kind of reflection. It is not happening on a shiny surface. It is happening because the light could not escape a denser medium. It, it was forced to stay inside. So that kind of reflection, where light cannot go out of a denser medium and it reflects inside the same medium, such a refraction is called, such a reflection is called total internal reflection. First of all, to explain, to explain total internal reflection, you need to be very, very confident about critical angle. You need to understand critical angle is a special angle for which the corresponding angle of refraction becomes 90 degree. Now, what will happen if I increase the angle beyond critical angle? So here's a, here's a statement. If angle of incidence is greater than critical angle in denser medium, instead of refraction, reflection occurs. This phenomenon is called Total internal reflection. Total internal reflection. So for total internal reflection, angle of incidence must be bigger than critical angle. Condition one. Ray of
incidence is in denser medium condition 2 ray of condition 2 is angle of incidence is bigger than critical angle So number one, ray of incidence must be in denser medium. Number two, angle of incidence must be greater than critical angle. If angle of incidence is more than critical angle, instead of refraction, reflection will happen. And such a reflection is called total internal reflection. Total internal reflection is used in periscope. Okay. There's a kind of uh, apparatus that is used in submarines to look outside, what, what is happening out there. Now, periscopes, and they were used far before the cameras were invented, and they were so cheap and so accurate and so great. Okay? So these cameras are not very, uh, they were not uh, very effective and very handy and very uh, useful for these kind of things. But these days, uh, all these stuff is done with, with cameras. Periscope was using two uh, 45 degree prism, light went in and then total internally reflected from prism, prism one and then went to prism two. There again, angle of incidence, it was managed. It was arranged in a, in a specific way that angle of incidence was always more than critical angle inside the prism. So light reflected instead of refracted. Okay. So just one second. Okay. Now, uh, one uses periscope, other is optical fiber. In optical fiber, we like, for example, right now, you, some of you might be in Middle East, some might be in Pakistan somewhere, some are in Islamabad. So how are we communicating right now? How are you listening to me right now? The answer is that I'm, I'm saying something, which is an audio signal. My microphone is converting it into an electric pulse. That electric pulse is later converted into data, a binary data somehow. And then it is, it is sent to my uh, service provider who, who is providing me internet. Then it is converted into light pulse which light pulse is uh, uh, was somehow poured into the optical fiber. Optical fibers are uh, glass rods, very thin glass rod. Some, something that they are kind of mirror pipes. They, they're not pipes, they are solid glass rods. So one light, light goes in, it is forced to reflect. Because we make sure that light goes in at and and when when it goes in, it always hit the surface at more than critical angle. Okay. So this is a normal, and we make sure this angle is more than critical angle, and then this angle is also. Obviously, because the angle of incidence is equal to angle of refraction, they both are equal. So light data is converted into light, and then light is trapped in the optical fiber. And it keeps on reflecting on every edge. At every point, angle of incidence is more than critical angle, and angle of incidence is also equal to angle of refraction. 
and and what is the point of doing all this why, why to go through such a complicated method answer is light is the fastest thing around light can go around earth approximately 6 to 7 times in one second the whole earth it can just can go around the whole earth that fast so if for example somebody is in middle east and i say hello and my sound travels with the speed of sound it should take about 6 to 8 hours for my sound to go to middle east and then answer to come back to me so obviously the whole communication right now is not happening with speed of sound so how how are you listening to me obviously sometimes there are some some uh, uh, problems and some some hazards so sometimes the process becomes slow but you know what we call slow a, a, a delay of 0.5 of a second that will be very difficult to communicate like if there there will be 0.5 of a 0.5 second delay on a phone call it it will become almost impossible to talk to somebody so how are we communicating right now we are using optical fibers to make this communication fast lightning fast literally so this communication is lightning fast and is just not, not a, as a phrase but it is literally happening with speed of light so optical fiber is is something that make light go from one end to another end and then optical fibers are used in communication and then uh, they are also used in endoscopy endoscopy is is a medical uh, diagnostic system it is kind of investigation of inside of human being uh, in this case optical fiber is sent in we use a light that goes in using the optical fiber it reflects from the inner walls of the human body and then the light comes back and camera can capture it and a live image of inside of human body especially stomach or intestines can be seen on uh, a screen by the by the doctor okay so uh, endoscopy helps you to get a live picture of inside of human being now all these things are related to refraction number one uh, refraction when light goes from one kind of medium to another kind of medium it deviates and everything and when when light bends well, there is an idea of critical angle which is an angle in a denser medium if uh, for, for if angle of incidence is exactly critical angle angle of refraction will be 90 degree now if angle of incidence more than critical angle total internal refraction happens so somehow all these things are related to refraction of light the last thing that is related to refraction of light is dispersion one more thing till now we we discussed that in every kind of refraction whether light goes from denser to rarer rarer to denser speeds up slows down wavelength increases wavelength decreases and everything is happening but there is one thing that is not changing one thing that does not change and that is that is frequency but now dispersion of light it is a kind of refraction but and again frequency is not changing but frequency will control how much refraction should happen different colors have different frequencies red has least frequency blue has uh, if we are talking about monochromatic colors monochromatic means single color light 
then red has the least frequency, blue has the maximum frequency. But if we are talking about the whole spectrum, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, in that case, red has the least visible frequency and violet will have maximum visible frequency. Note, frequency does not change in refraction, but frequency controls the magnitude of refraction. Low frequency light bend less, high frequency light bend more, regardless whether they are going from the faster medium to the slow medium or from slow medium to the faster medium, they bend more. If they have more frequency, they bend more in both cases. And if they have less frequency, they will bend less in both cases. By both cases, I mean whether moving from uh, slow medium to fast medium or from fast medium to slow medium. Here we have a solid triangular prism. What happens if we let light go in from a side like this? So we get red on the top, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. I could actually make uh, all these colors, I think. Do I have orange somewhere? looks kind of orange. So there will be a band of orange color. There will be a band of red color on the top. Then there will be a band of yellow color. Then there should be a green one. And these colors will not be as I'm making them right now, okay? They will be blur within one another. Indigo. And violet. Okay. So why are these colors bending like that? Answer is. The colors with more frequency bend more and less frequency will bend less. So when light from the sun, which is white light, when it goes into the prism, uh, the red has the least frequency and I hope you can see red has bent less. And blue has more frequency, so blue has bent more. And this is what examiner can sometimes ask you to do. You have to understand that First of all, you should remember that uh, which color has more frequency than the other one. Secondly, you need to remember that uh, the color that has more frequency is supposed to bend more. Red has a smaller frequency, so red is bending less. Blue has more frequency, so blue is bending more. And, and I hope you can see that in the next refraction, when light is going out of the prism, red has bent less and blue again bends more. So whenever light goes from one kind of medium to another kind of medium, although the frequency is not changing, but it, it controls the amount of bend that should be there. Okay. So light with more frequency should bend more and less frequency should bend less. And this is how we can split uh, white light into its basic colors. And this this procedure of splitting light into its basic colors is known as dispersion of light. We disperse light. Okay. 
uh, some questions. I hope I have sent this uh, PDF to you, the waves. In this uh, PDF, before tomorrow's class, I think you should be able to do first four questions. Like all these questions which are before this length thing. Okay. There is one, two, three, and four questions. Some of them are solved. Just ignore the solved part. Just try to solve them again. And uh, before tomorrow's class, I would uh, recommend that you do those questions. Okay. I, I've shared the PDF with you. So you haven't questions. shared it with me, sir. Seriously? Okay, just mm -hmm. uh, I'm sending it to you right now. All right. Just one second. Is this you? Uh, yes, sir. I think I shared it with you. Oh, that, uh, that was a different way. Okay. Now, uh, this one is uploading. You get it in, in a short while. Uh, see you people tomorrow. Okay, sir. Take care. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz, sir.